You know, when you score the biggest goal in hockey history in Canada, where do you go from there? Now, for Paul Henderson, what happened with him after the 72 Summit Series goal, and partially because of 74, that's the reason why he played the Russians when he was in the WHA. Uh, he wanted to stay in somewhat anonymity feel. He felt that a lot of the, uh, the uh, attention he got wasn't conducive to his game. Now, uh, when he left the Maple Leafs, Henderson officially moved to WHA when he played in another tournament against the Soviets. Now, um, the, he started the 74-75 season with the Toronto Toros while playing 58 games. He missed the playoffs after tearing his knee ligaments in a game against the Phoenix Roadrunners when colliding with Bob Bullitt, an opposing player during a line change. Now, he had 24 goals and 55 points in 76, his last in Toronto with the Toros. Following that season, the Toros relocated Alabama, where he became the Birmingham Bulls. Now, while his contract stipulated he did not have to, have to relocate with the team, Henderson appreciated the chance to move to a city where he could play in relative anonymity after the heavy pressure and attention of the last number of years. He played the final three years of his contract in Birmingham, scoring 23, 37, and 24 goals, but made only one playoff appearance due, during his five WHA seasons in 1978. Now here's where it gets bizarre. When he had WHA merged with the NHL following the 79 season, Birmingham was not invited to join the NHL. The team instead joined the Central Hockey League for the 1980 season and became a minor league affiliate of the Atlanta Flames. Now, Henderson considered retiring, but his family had settled in Birmingham and he knew that he could remain in the United States only as long as he was employed. The Flames offered him a spot in their roster, but he preferred to remain with his family. He signed a two-year contract with the Flames on the promise that he would stay in Birmingham unless the team needed his services as a result of injury to other players. He spent the majority of the season in Birmingham, but when Atlanta did struggle with injuries, they recalled him for 30 games where he scored seven goals and six assists. Henderson also appeared in four playoff contests. In his final game at Toronto Maple Leaf Garden, in a ironic twist, Henderson led the Flames to a 5-1 win over the Maple Leafs with a, with a deuce resulting in his being named the game's first star. Now, Henderson intended the 1981 season to be his last as a player. He was again offered a spot in the Flames, in part to help develop the team's young players, but the franchise had relocated to Canada to become the Calgary Flames, and Henderson chose to remain with Birmingham as a player and assistant coach. He missed several games due to injuries, but scored six goals in three games. However, the Bulls fell into financial difficulty, and on February 23, 81, the team ceased operations mid-season. Choosing not to leave his Birmingham home, Henderson retired as a player and spent the remainder of the season as a roving scout for the, for the Flames. Now, what's kind of ironic here, ladies and gentlemen, now, he had an opportunity to become a color commentator for the Maple Leafs broadcast in 81, but Ballard still upset that Henderson had defected from the Leafs WHA prevented his hiring. In Birmingham, he became a stockbroker, briefly joining brokerage firm E.F. Hutton. However, he was unable to get a work permit in the United States, despite a petition signed by thousands of Birmingham residents who fought to have him stay. Now, Following the high of the 72 Summit Series and the personal lows that came after, he struggled with a sense of dis discontentment. He turned to religion, becoming a born-again Christian in 1975. Now unable to work as a broker, Henderson intended, entered a seminary and studied to become a minister. When he finally gave up his efforts to acquire American work visa in 84, he returned finally to Toronto. Under the auspices of the Power to Change Ministries, formerly Campus Crusade for Christ Canada, he founded a men's ministry in Ontario called Leader Impact and travels across Canada, giving TAD talks and speeches, particularly to businessmen. He has received an honorary doctorate from Briarcrest College and Seminary and an honorary degree from Tyndale University College and Seminary. Now, Henderson, of course, is an author. Uh, author. His autobiography, Shooter for Glory, was released in 92. When Jim Prime, he also co-authored the 2011 book, How Hockey Explains Canada, an exploration of the relationship between the sport and Canadian culture. He released a memoir in 2012 called The Goal of My Life with Roger Lajoie. 
Now, the death of his father due to heart problems at the age of 49 had a lasting effect on Henderson. He was conscious of his own health and survived a blockage in his own heart that was discovered in 2004. He was eventually uh, diagnosed with chronic lymphatic leukemia in 2009. The disease unfortunately prevented him from attending the 40th anniversary celebrations of the Summit Series in Moscow, but he was responding well to experimental treatment as part of a clinical trial he participated in into 2013. Now, just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, five seasons with the Bulls, four in the, three in the WHA, two in the CHL. With the Bulls in 1980, 35 points in 47 games, including 17 goals, and 13 points in 30 games with the Flames, and four games in the playoffs. Now, with the Bulls again in 81, uh, 17 points in 35 games, including uh, six goals. Now, the reason why I'm doing the side pod, podcast, uh, podcast on this, uh, 2021, sort of like to have the uh, the uh, the big, uh, what you call, 40th anniversary of the last of the Atlanta Flames glory, as we say. Now, the Flames themselves could have done a lot better with Henderson in the lineup, especially in that 1979 season. But like I said, he was satisfied in Birmingham. He felt born home. And, uh, you know, all the pressure too as well, it should he or shouldn't be in the Hockey Hall of Fame, it doesn't really matter because in the, the court of public opinion, Henderson was probably one of the best money players of all time. But seeing him playing with Atlanta was quite bizarre because the equipment used and the style of play wasn't of like the, the early 1980s NHL. It was almost like the early uh, the 1970s NHL. You know, the Detroit years before he moved on to Toronto. But Paul Henderson in Birmingham, very interesting experience. And, you know, he's a hometown hero in Birmingham. It still is. If you talk to anybody from Birmingham, they say, oh, you're from Canada. You know, do you know Paul Henderson? Exactly. Thanks for listening. Bye.